This is the grade six math practice test for T and ready. Question currently, number 19. We're going to do both parts here, parts A and B. Using the coordinate plane, draw a right triangle with the vertices negative 3, 3, negative 3, negative 3, and 5, negative 3. And they've named those points X, Y, and Z. Now, one of the things that back in the old days, uh, when I was in the classroom a lot more than I am now, that students struggled with is they would forget because, you know, slope is change in y over the change in x. It's like they just forgot everything they ever learned and decided that, well, somehow or other, this is not x and y. But if you have trouble doing that, just make yourself a note of where they're supposed to go, and then it's easy to find your point. So negative 3 and 3. Uh, the, I'll go in the x to negative 3. I'll go up to 3, and I'll make a, a point there negative 3, negative 3, so here and then down, and then 5 is my x, so I go up 5 and then I go down negative 3. Now the thing about this, uh, also I should label these, that's this, that's this, and that's this. I'll need that information in a bit. The thing about this is it's difficult to draw straight lines with this pen. When you do it on paper, there's actually a little bit of pushback, a little friction that makes it easier to get a straight line. But in this, it's just kind of to the winds. Anyway, it's not terrible, but this is a right triangle. So now I'm done with that part. That's all you actually had to do for part A. It's just asking you to um, draw a right triangle. So mission accomplished. Now, the other part is using that information. That's why it's part A and part B to answer a different question. Line segment XZ is 10 units long. How many units is the perimeter of the right triangle? So I'm going to roll this back up. And they told me that we want to know about the perimeter. The nice thing here is they actually told me how long XZ is, and they said that it's 10. And they used units. Yeah, I assume they didn't have a specific unit, but you never know. Anyway, so now they want to know about the perimeter. So what's the perimeter? Occasionally in movies, you'll hear someone who's a security guard goes, I'm going to check the perimeter. What that means is essentially they're going to walk all the way around the building. So for the perimeter, we want to go all the way around the shape from X to Y to Z, all the way back to X. Or the other way, it doesn't actually matter. You can go clockwise, counterclockwise. It's cool. So to find all the parts, I need to make sure I add three sides. So I'm going to have 10 here and then some other number here, and then some other number here. How do I find these numbers? By using this magical method called counting. There are, uh, you could do some sort of overly wrought calculations for this, or computations at least. Why would you? Just count. It makes no sense not to. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this next thing I'm going to say may seem crazy, but I see people do it all the time. When you start counting, when you put your pencil down, don't count that as one. Sometimes I see people go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and they get 7 instead of 6. That is not really that uncommon of a mistake, but if you were measuring the distance from your house to the store, you wouldn't stand in your driveway and say, okay, I've driven a mile, unless your driveway is a mile long, in which case, nice. But generally speaking, you're not going to stand in your driveway and say, well, that's one mile driven, and you haven't even gotten into the car yet. So... Make sure that when you start here, you don't count until you get to the next point. All right. So I'm going to put that 6 right here. And then this one, YZ. So this, by the way, was XZ. This was XY. And this one is going to be YZ. That's all three parts. Now, again, counting. Starting here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to add all those numbers together. I put that plus sign like way over here for no reason. 8 and 6 is 14, plus 10 is 24. And if you don't want to remember, like if you're nervous that you'll make a mistake, just use your calculator. This is a calculator allowed section. So my answer for this one is 24. Could you have taken, okay, I'm up at 3, and then I'm down at negative 3, and I'll just 3 minus negative 3 gives me 6? Yeah, you could do that. You could do negative 3... Uh, or 5 minus negative 3 and get 8. That's all fine. Do whatever. But, I mean, just counting works just the same. And then I just put that answer down here in this box. And that's it. 
I had to draw the picture anyway. It cost me nothing to count. You don't have to draw these little swoops or whatever. That's not required. It's just something that I tend to do. Um, but counting it out and then adding it up makes a lot more sense. And then you can see sort of how it sets up. And this is actually, um, you'll learn uh, at one point that this is actually a, a Pythagorean triple, but you don't need to know what that is at this time, I don't think, so you're probably pretty good.